asking me to believe in anything. It was asking me to experience first and to draw my conclusions from that. I found that asana was inherently spiritual as I had to deal with my own personal limitations in moving through a particular asana a spiritual doorway opened up. So even though I went for like the least spiritual reasons, I'm broke, I need a job, somehow yoga managed to use that condition of my life in order to open a lot of pathways. It's helped me to see that there's almost nothing I can do that isn't yoga given the proper perspective. So during that time, while I was living there, I was asked to chant certain mantras. And um, the crowd of people there seemed to already be in on whatever the ideology was, and they, they somehow seemed to systematically explain, refuse to explain to me what was going on. So I had to figure it out and come up with certain explanations for myself, which actually turned out to be a kind of advantage, because it allowed me to kind of look um, from another angle at all of this stuff. You know, I'd be lit in the ashram, people say, oh, Om Namah Shivaya, Shiva, a very great mantra. You know, you chant 1,008 times, you are liberated. You know, it's like, I never heard the mantra. I'm not sure what liberation was. Shiva required a big explanation. So I find myself sitting at the top of this mountain with 1,000 people in this huge tent. And we were asked to chant this mantra, Om Namah Shivaya. It wasn't particularly explained, but in the course of one hour, everybody's doing this out loud at you know whatever pace. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah. Like one thousand people creating this incredible sound, and I sat in the midst of this sound, and that's what moved me. I heard everything in the world from the sound of the train coming to the station, or a tea kettle, or a baby crying or little bits of intelligible words, all of it was in there in this sound. So, I want to jump in right away without saying very much into this particular mantra. Um, and I want to locate it in a place that should be very familiar to you. When I'm sitting next to the ocean and listening to it, it makes all of these sounds. So, these mantras are really a kind of reflections of world outside, and as we will discuss a little later, the world inside. If you listen very carefully to the sound of the ocean, it's going shh. And the sound of that noise, what we call white noise, is the sum total of all the possible frequencies that can be made. And it's both the noisiest thing and the quietest thing. In every single language, the sound shh. In every single language I've ever encountered, the sound of oh means something like wonder. In every single language, the sound mm, feels something close and satisfying. In every single language, the sound of ah feels like release and relief. In every single language, the sound of speaks of excitement and energy and vibration. So this is a syllabary of universal sounds that every person who's ever been born understands in a vibrational and emotional way. So if you want to look at what does this mantra mean, I can explain it in terms of its Hindu mythology, but maybe it's more interesting to explain it in terms of how it feels. Um, I'll explain Sanskrit a little more in depth in a minute, but mostly what I want you to do is just sing this mantra, and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> what we'll do is sing it all together. I'll sing a little bit of it for a second here, so you can hear what it sounds like.
It's the entire content of what we're going to do. Now, how are you going to do it? The first thing is to assume a comfortable, easy, cross-legged, seated posture. What chanting really is, is pranayama. If you're sitting in a chair, just bring your awareness to your posture and start to feel an easy movement of your breath between this place just below your navel, what in Tai Chi they call your dantian. Um, and experience an ease of air flowing down to that point and then expanding from that point. If you can't sit cross-legged, then maybe try dandasana or anything that you can sit for maybe about 15 minutes without moving. And begin to bring your attention to how your body feels. Is there any place that's tense? Is there any place where already you're encountering resistance? And start to watch your mental attitude. Is there a part of you that says, I really don't want to chant. <laughs> it's really hot. I'm not sure that I'm into this. <laughs> There's a lot of things I'm really pissed off about right now. And I'd rather not be doing this. If there are, then just check that out. It's not going to go away, so you might as well just accept it. There's three places to breathe in this. <laughs> A breath, and then om. And then another breath. Nama. And one more breath. So just repeat that after me. It's going to repeat over and over and over, and it's not going to change. That might drive you crazy, too. <laughs> I know that a lot of people feel a kind of trauma, you know, when asked to sing, as if, like, they're exposed on some level that they've never been exposed before. Or maybe somebody said back in the third grade that you had the worst voice they'd ever heard. Or somebody said, you can't carry a tune. And all of this stuff comes up. If you don't sing, on one level, I don't care. On the other hand, if you don't sing, it's like going to um, a pool party and watching everybody else swim. You know, it can be sort of fun, but it's more refreshing to jump in the water. You can watch other people practice yoga, but you won't know anything about it until you do it yourself. So I urge you to actually give your voice to it, and maybe for once, to not care what other people think about you. It may be to consider that they're too busy worrying about how their voice sounds to worry about how your voice sounds. Um, that said, in order to sing in a group of people, it's really good to listen, to try and blend your voice with the person next to you. And if that person is singing really horribly, then that's why this is yoga. Okay? It's ever if everybody's saying in perfect tune, we wouldn't need this. The world is full of noise. It's full of people that are out of tune in all kinds of crazy ways. So, if you hear a voice next to you that's not so beautiful, then extend your compassion. And we're going to sing it together for a little while. There is no actual time in this, except for the way that we breathe, which makes it absolutely necessary that we listen to one another. Because you can't go one, two, three, four, and then come in on the note. Everybody kind of has to slide in together. I'll talk about why that's a beautiful thing after we've done it. If you want to close your eyes, that's cool. The words are up on the wall. My suggestion 
is that once you've got the mantra in your mind, then just close your eyes and sing it. 